as promised a long, long time ago, William and Sly by Kajenks. It's been, uh, this is Thursday. It's taken me quite a while to get here. I haven't been sleeping well, so I haven't wanted to do anything. I've been real lazy all week. But today was my day off because I worked on Saturday. So I did a whole bunch of stuff today. I went and got a new driver's license. I have uh, got a new game. Got my student loans all figured out for pharmacy school. Hey, buddy, I'm sure you're excited to go hunting for mushrooms, but I need to ask you a favor. Press space. The rune stones I used to teleport to the old storage cave were deactivated for some reason. Can you turn them back on while you're out there? Press space. You'll need to gather fairy flies to do it, so watch out for darklings. You know how they love fairy flies. Press space. One of them ambushed me a few days ago. It was terrifying. The thing popped right up out of the mud. Press space. Anyway, when you light a runestone, you'll get a charge. That'll banish any darklings around you, so keep an eye out and get rid of as many as you can. Press space. Oh, and I'm working on a map for you. Come back in a little bit and it should be done. Press space. Something weird is so go uh, something weird is going on, so be careful out there. I don't know what you'll run into. Press space. Okay, so here's the general controls. You cannot teleport. The general controls, you use the arrow keys to move, and when you hit shift, it brings up the menu. Your main objective is to activate 13 uh, rune stones. And then you earn points by collecting mushrooms, um, overcoming the locked boxes and traps set by the gnomes, and destroying darklings, which are ugly little beasties. And after a little bit of playing time, you can come back and William will give you the map. And if you hear this, I'm adjusting my headset because I wear glasses and it is causing me pain. Be careful climbing trees. You cannot climb this tree. It's a stupid place to put that sign. You can, however, climb this tree. Any of the trees that look like masts on a ship, on a ship can be climbed. All right, so we're playing as this little fox. Wee, wee. And not here. Where are you? Not there either. Right here. No. Still yet more farther down. Good English from my side. Secret cave left. Not all pathways are visible. We got a mushroom. Jump up mushroom. And another mushroom. So this game consists of you running around. Ah, that's a fairy fly. Once you grab one, they follow you around. Foxden. This is where I live. And there's, of course, a hidden mushroom cache in there. Over this way, there's more hidden mushrooms. Wee. Okay, so what your job is, is go around and find these fairy flies. Now I've got two following me. And uh, you also want to find... There's one more. Wee. Rune stones, which are hidden around. And when you get the map, it makes it easier to find them. Things are placed in random areas. So you won't always find them in... Well, I shouldn't say random, but m kind of random areas. Fairy flies will appear in certain areas, but they won't always be there. Sometimes you have to go back and check for them. Oh, mushroom, yeah. Whee, there's another fairy fly. And unfortunately, when you f do find a darkling, they hide behind this grass, and so sometimes they're hard to see. Go down here, grab that mushroom. And into this hidden area. See, there must be another way up. Oh. Can't find your way out of there. Head up over here. Another fairy fly. Up here. Oh, I don't think there's any secret passages in this particular set. No. Where's that rune stone? Maybe I just passed it by. There's another firefly. Look at how firefly-y we are. No. There it is. So when you find a rune stone... You can, uh, just touching it will tell you if you have enough fairy flies. This is holy ground. Um, where are you? Over here. No? 
Oh well. Touching it, if you don't have enough fairy flies, it will tell you how many more you need to get. And if you do have enough fairy flies, as we saw there, you, you activate it automatically. Some of your fairy flies that you have disappear. And it is now available for teleport. And I'll show you the teleport real quick. Wow, we're already five minutes into this. Oh, I didn't ask for the map. I'm sorry. Q is the teleport. And when you activate the line of stones... You should have the map for me now, right? I'm not done yet. Okay. The stones are in a line, so if you hit Q, you go to the left. If you hit uh, E, you go to the right. Get up this tree. <laughs> I keep missing. I told you I would tell you about k so let's go over with k real quick. When 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons came out, they released a book called the Hero Builder's Guidebook. And the Hero Builder's Guidebook, hey, there's a key. We can go open one of those locked boxes. The Hero Builder's Guidebook included what were called recipes. Click two mushrooms. And one of the recipes in the back of the book was the counterspeller, which was the word I wanted to uh, think of in the last video. And counterspellers are multi-class fighter wizards who use their wizard spells to counter enemy spells, and then they use their fighter skills, their extra feats and their better attack bonus and weapons and what have you, to beat wizards' faces in. And Kwin Maganobion was my attempt at making a counterspeller. As far as baseline Dungeons & Dragons goes... Hey, I just activated you. Where is a Darkling? I want to kill something. There you go, you're dead. Ca uh, that particular counter speller recipe is very weak. So you have to have a understanding and um, adjusting DM. Someone who's going to make it so that you work correctly in the context of their adventure, either by making sure that your abilities are useful or by granting you bonuses to make you useful. Well, when I started statting up Kwin, Dun uh, Dragon Magazine had a list of alternate familiars. There's always another way. Yes, of course there is. Whoa. Hey, whoa. Darklings, if they get you, they eat your f fairy flies. Whoa. No. You can't have them. They're mine. And uh, one of the alternate familiars that they had was the Fox Familiar, which granted you, like, a bonus to your reflex or something like that. Uh, just missed it. There it is. There's a key. I knew there was something down there. And so Kwin got his Fox Familiar, and in honor of the many fox-based fables, I named him Aesop. Whee! And he looked pretty much exactly like this. I had another character at one point, his name was... there's another key. Uh, Pavel. Yay! And he was a, pa uh, a paladin in a... Whee! A gestalt game. And in third edition Dungeons and Dragons, a Gestalt character had two classes. He wasn't multi-classed, he was fully classed in two classes. So they were more powerful than normal characters. And in the particular campaign we were playing, everybody had to be um, sorcerer and something else. And so Pavel was a, a sorcerer and a paladin. As a sorcerer, his familiar was a snow fox. And as a Paladin, he had an animal companion, uh, his mount. There we go, more mushrooms. And he was a lot of fun to play. Oop, what did this say? Up and over. Yay. Where are you? There we go. His, uh, his fox was named, uh, Sister, Sister Sasha. And brother Mishka was his horse. He was a whole lot of fun to play. Is this where I was before? Yeah. 
run and jump around. I'm not actually playing the game, I'm just sort of running around and letting you see everything. You really need to play this game for yourself, because it's just so fun. Whoa! Alright, I think I'm going to head back and grab the map, and then we'll end this video. Because when you see the map, you'll see how long this game can be. How huge it is. If I can get back. This... come on. I might have to cut out part of the middle here. Run! Run really, really fast back to where we need to go. Q. Hey, I finished the map, and he's marked the runestones in red, so they'll be easier to find. Press shift. That is how big this game is. And this is where we're going to end the video.